G'day guys, I'm Daniel, and in this video, I'll be showing you how to care for a diamond python slash carpet python. This is Crystal, she's my female diamond carpet python. She's currently just over two meters long, she's around four years old. And what I'm going to do in this video, I'm going to go across her whole setup, what I feed her, what I used to feed her when she was little. So I'll go through the whole process of when, ever since I've had her since day one. What she's in now, what she was when I first got her, all the feeding, like procedures, how to keep them, stuff like that. And just before I get into it, I've got to change the battery. But yeah, let's get to it. So this is her setup. We'll start off with the setup that she's currently in now. So it's a four foot long by three foot high by two foot wide or two feet deep enclosure. She's got a custom rock wall, which is a universal rock background. Got a log slash branch, whatever you want to call it, goes across half the tank so she can get up and about. Plant, 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 plant. Also got her hide down here, which is her hotspot hide, which is got the heat mat just underneath here, which you guys just can't see. Behind the rock wall, if you see like that ledge there, she goes out and about behind that. That's her cold side. On top, you've got a UVB strip that's not necessary because snakes don't necessarily need UVB. I'll talk about when I first got her. She was probably around <clears throat> 30 centimeters when I first got her, maybe 35. And she was in a two foot URS reptile enclosure, same sort of setup like the rainforest setup. And she was being fed fuzzies once a week, fuzzy mice, and I just upgraded from there. And today is actually her first time upgrading to rabbits. So she was previously on jumbo rats once a week. Now, since they're pretty expensive to buy. I'm gonna try and find a rat breeder to get some cheap ones off. I decided to try rabbits out since I'm spending the money once a week. So the rabbits are around that big? No, around that big. For Crystal, she's currently just over two meters, so she'll chow that down pretty quickly. With the setups, like humidity wise, let's talk about humidity. I prefer to keep Crystal either like high ish 70s, so like maybe lowest 74 percent and then go up to maybe 86 87 percent so that means i'll spray the tank maybe every two days every day if i'm here i just currently work full time so whenever i really can i'll spray the tank always clean it out whenever she poos just to keep it nice and fresh nice and humid in there and so far she loves this she's been in this tank for a few months now just under a year i'm pretty sure uh, maybe seven, eight months she's been in here before she was in a three foot uh, reptile one enclosure, which is what Striker, my blonde spotted python is in. If you want a video on like this with Striker, the blonde spotted python, just comment down below, let me know. No, but this is her setup. I'll take you guys off the tripod real quick so you can get a better angle. Let's have a geese. So like I said, UVB strip straight across. Nice universal rock background. I'll get the focus. There's Crystal, as you can see. She's pretty big. Half of her is behind the rock wall where she was in the cold hiding spot that she always goes to. That's her favorite little ledge that she likes to hang on. Got plants there, plants right across the entire enclosure. But yeah, this is practically enclosure. Here's all the wiring stuff. This usually tells the temp, but it's currently off because the heat mat's off at the moment because it's currently pretty good here down in New South Wales, Australia. But when it starts to get cold, that's when this will go on. This will go on, show the temp. I used to have a one that shows the humidity in here, but since I've always been keeping it like the same, so kind of really know what it is. So got rid of it. It's currently down here actually. Keeping the humidity of this second tank that I'm gonna be getting a new addition for. So if you guys want it the same to know, I'm trying to get four setups in here. So two of the same here and then two underneath there. So two different gecko species hopefully to come soon. Sorry, I was speaking a little quick. I'll show you behind here. This is where she likes to go cold side all the way at the end there. And yeah. So this is her setup. If you guys want to with them any like clues, what clues, sorry, any tips with like setup wise, just let me know. So they like the humid. They like it raining constantly. They're not really a snake that likes the heat. They really love the humidity. That, Especially Crystal, she loves it when I'm spraying the tank. But yeah, so I'll be feeding her as well in this video. Her first rabbit, see if she takes it. 
because I have a feeling she's pretty hungry because she did, it is due for a feed since last week was the jumbo rat, the last jumbo rat she'll probably ever have, unless she doesn't like the rabbit, because I noticed with the rabbits they're extra furry, extra fluffy, the rats are just pretty straightforward. I also plan on putting a waterfall here, as you can see there's like a little ledge there, when I can find time and some money, wire up a little waterfall system, put the water ball here, and then I'll obviously have to drill a hole into the water to like keep it in a cycle, so it goes straight up, straight through the rock wall, because that means I'll have to silicon the rock wall back so good old crystal doesn't get mixed up in all the tubing and stuff like that. But yeah, this is her setup. If you guys are wondering what's in here, it's just the spare tank, spare heat mats, spare stuff like that. Also, the substrate I'm currently using is uh, Queen Mix. You can get that from Bunnings. It's definitely the cheapest side of substrate. You can get a brick that you just mix with water for around two bucks. This is probably a brick and a half, two bricks worth of substrate. You can also use aspirin. You can use critter crumble, little wood chippings. It varies depending. I was thinking of going to aspirin because it looks a lot cleaner, look nicer, but then it kind of destroys the rainforest look. So I was thinking of getting wood chips mixed with like dirt and queen mix. I really want to go buy active one day, maybe put some real life plants in here. It's just really hard to work with. So I've been told, but I'm thinking of giving it a crack. Let me know what you guys think down below if I should go buy active with crystal. But yeah, all right, we'll cut to the feeding now. So here's the rabbit I'll be feeding her. She started off feeding on fuzzy mice. And she just progressed as she got bigger. I started testing her like so if she was still had room for two fuzzies, then I'd know it's time to upgrade. Or I'd just keep feeding her two fuzzies, keep her full. And they just kept going up from fuzzy mice all the way to small rabbits. And she's still growing, so I have a feeling I might need to go to medium rabbits. But it's a big difference. But yeah, we'll cut to this and see if she takes the rabbit. So with Crystal, she's... No, she's really food responsive as well, which is good. I've been told some dime pythons are not the best with food. Chris is always hungry. So we'll see how this goes, see if she takes the rabbit. Hopefully she doesn't go for my fingers. Face the head, there we go. I will take the camera off so you guys get a better look. So yeah, obviously she likes the rabbits just as much as she likes the jumbo rats. I'm nice as well the rabbits stink a little bit more than the rats, which is kind of confusing. Maybe it's just a one-off. But yeah. I'm glad she took the rabbit, otherwise it would have been a pretty expensive thing to throw out. Also when you're defrosting your food for your snakes don't put it in like boiling hot water because it tends to like pop their organs sometimes you see a lot of blood come out of them I've experienced it a few times like if the water's too hot especially with like small mice it gets like the skin gets really expanded and weak so if you grow up with the tweezers or tongs whatever you want to call them they just rip open and their guts just go everywhere so just keep them in like warmish water for a bit longer and you've got yourself perfect food for a snake but yeah, I hope you guys found this video useful for keeping a darn python. If you guys have got any questions in regards to darn pythons, comment down below. I'll answer them within the hour practically because I always get notified. It's always fun replying to comments now that I got them back. If you guys didn't know, my comments were turned off for quite a bit because I did like a aggrievement saying, yeah, it's for kids. But for some reason, YouTube decided to get rid of my comments, so I had to fix that up. So comment down below anything you guys want asked in regards to dime pythons or jungle carpet pythons. They are pretty similar. And I'll get back with you guys. So if you guys like the video, please make sure to comment down below, like the video, and subscribe if you guys want to see more. See you guys.